we were interested in the possibility of communities using drones themselves uh, for forest man or natural resource management, particularly forest management. So these drones would not be operated by the government, certainly not by any the security forces of the government. They would might be operated by NGOs, but on, on behalf of communities, or maybe by groups of communities, because of course they're relatively expensive. Why should communities want to get involved in this? Why should they want it, apart from having some fun? I'm sure there are boys in the community and girls in the community who would have fun driving the drones. They're probably not interested in measuring carbon directly, but they are interested in looking at the state of their forest. They're interested in wildfires, forest fires, for example. We work in some communities in northern Mexico, which are very extensive. I mean, they may be 20 or 30 kilometers up to the end of a community. From fire towers, they can see the fire in the distance, they can jump in a truck, and they can get there in 45 minutes or one hour. With a drone, they could be there in five minutes. The drone could fly around the area and take pictures, and, and we could see which direction the fire is going and how fast it's growing and send that back live, or the drone flies back and bring, brings back the information. They are interested in invasions of their territory by other communities or by commercial foresters, or in Mexico, sorry to say, by drug gangs and so on who are coming in. The drone will give them a, an eye in the sky to see what's going on. For Red Plus, the, the, the drone will be useful for quite a few things. It will forest change, forest cover change, um, and particularly for, it would be important for rapid changes, um, which may be from fires or from invasions and so on. Uh, in Red Plus, for the, for the sampling of the areas, which are going to be, going to be surveyed at, at high density, at high detail, you need different types of forest type and forest management type. The price is dropping very, very rapidly, like most of these technologies do, like, like cell phones, smartphones, etc. Uh, you can build your own. Um, you can use a 3D printer to print a drone, if you have a 3D printer already. The price is dropping very, very, very rapidly, and it's, uh, it's already within, within reach of groups of communities or of a local organization to do it and will and we'll continue. The camera equipment is still a bit expensive, but there are some people working on just using a regular digital camera, maybe, and, and it takes so many photos that you can, you can put them together with the right software and build up a, a, a better, a good, a sufficient image from that. Well, because the technology is, is ready for it, um, and I think the social interest is ready for it. I mean, we're, when we talk to some communities just as a, a wish list, as a Christmas list, would you, would you like to use such a thing? They say, let, me tr let us try. You know, we're not gonna say yes or no, but we're willing to try and see what we can do with it. What is going to change very soon is the leg legislation for it, the legislatory framework. Um, some countries already have quite strong limitations, if not outright bans, on using, on using drones. Um, in Mexico at the moment, it's very uh, indeterminate, it's very undecided. And probably, in reality, in, a few, in 10 years' time, drones will be seen as a general pest around the world <laughs> because they're a little bit noisy. They'll be so ubiqu ubiquitous. Everybody will be using them for everything. And there could be accidents, and they, they can crack, maybe crack, they can crash, of course, or they can be misused easily by people. I think it is under the, the right conditions and the right places to do it. And we never pretend that all communities and all community forests will be interested in this. It will be particularly communities which have a small population and a large area. Because if you just have a tiny bit of forest, it's much better to walk around. For most things, it's better to walk around and do measurements on foot. But for certain places, it, it could be useful. And I believe, I would say, if we start now and show that it has some social benefits, and social benefits for people or for groups of society who are generally under, well, they're not underprivileged, but they are relatively 
um, relatively worse off, then this could be an argument for legislation to make some exceptions. Maybe they'll say, okay, no drones in cities, fair enough, but in rural areas, if the community and neighboring communities agree, then, then you can use them. But the security issues, the safety issues, and the privacy, definitely the privacy issues are important. And will have to be very, very good protocols which are understood by the community, made by the community, understood by, understood by the community, and imposed by the community. They say what these drones can do, what they can't do, and again, who owns the information. It doesn't matter who owns the drone, what it matters is who owns the information which comes from the, from the drone.